Hi guys, this is Maciek from OpenCashew. I'm going to show you how to build packages on Solaris 10. This is not a Solaris 11 tutorial since Solaris 11 uses a different packaging system called IPS. This tutorial shows how to build the old style System 5 Revision 4 packages. This video is mainly for system engineers who look after Solaris 10 machines and, for instance, uh, need an efficient way of distributing software across multiple hosts, where packaging is one of the first steps. And you can later push packages out using, for example, Puppet. Um, most of the tutorial is dedicated to the setup of GAR, um, the Open Cashew package building system. Uh, you will also see a package being built and installed. I'm not showing or explaining too much of Solaris package internals um, or lower level package making tools. Uh, one of the main purposes of GAR is to abstract all these mechanics away uh, to save you work. Um, I encourage you to learn about the package internals. Uh, you will need to know about um, them to work with packages, but uh, they are not necessary for this tutorial. Uh, what I'm showing here takes me about an hour. Um, large chunks of this hour consist of waiting for things like a large version checkout or uh, 150 packages to install. This is only during the setup though. Building a package itself is quick unless you're building something really large. Um, to follow this tutorial, uh, you will need a Solaris 10 installation with internet access. If you don't have one at the moment, you can go to the Oracle website, download and install the latest update of Solaris 10. Um, if you don't have a spare machine, you can use VirtualBox. And that's what I'm using here. Uh, what I have here uh, is a fresh installation on, of Solaris 10. Um, the system install has just finished and uh, the only thing I can uh, do right now is log in as root via the console. So I'm going to do just that. OK, I'm in. Um, I'm going to enable remote SSH access and set up a couple other things. Um, I'm using my notes as a shortcut. Okay, these are my notes. So I'm just going to do whatever I have in the notes. So this will allow me to log in through uh, SSH. So let's see how that works. Uh -huh. All right. Uh, let's continue. So I'm going to set up a um, home directory for the root user. Okay, I can now copy the key. Um, it will help if I put on the right host name. Okay, I'm just as well. Remove that. Okay. 
I'm going to set up the, the, <coughs> the default path. Uh, there's a couple of uh, directories in here. Uh, some of them are not that important. And the important ones are opt cashew sbin, opt cashew bin, and opt cashew gnu. Um, this one is nice because it gives you the GNU utilities such as, um, I don't know, grep, for instance, under the name of grep. Normally, uh, they are installed into this directory, but grep is named ggrep so that it doesn't collide. But if you don't mind that it collides uh, and you, if you just type grep, you get the GNU grep, then you can put that um, directory in front of your path. So we don't have the, these packages installed yet, but uh, we will in a few minutes. Okay. Same thing with manpath. We'll we'll have a couple of uh, man pen pages in this directory. So we'll set up the system so it uses that already. I'm going to set up a command prompt so I see that I'm root okay that helps um, okay at this point we will start installing open cache packages so first we'll bootstrap by installing package util all right um, I'm going to add a mirror so you can see. Oh, we don't have them right because we haven't installed it yet. So in here you can uh, you can see a couple of different settings you can have, and we will be subscribing to the unstable catalog. And I think why don't we use HTTP? Okay, um, let's fetch the list of available packages. Aha, uh -huh. why is it not found? Because path has not been updated. So let's log out, log in. Okay, now it should be good. Okay, we have the, mm, the list of packages. So, for instance, we can uh, see if we have Vim available. Yes, we do. Um, so at this point, we can install a, a couple of utilities. Um, I will just install Vim because I just use it so much. Uh, we will install many more packages quite soon when we install the um, the whole uh, guard dev meta package which is uh, there to pull in all the packages that are required to to build packages okay uh, we have vim installed um, one more useful package is uh, term info. Okay, it's already installed, so we can add it to the to the profile. Uh, we can set up a pager, which is more powerful than the inbuilt Solaris um, more utility. Uh, we are going to set up a regular user. And the idea being that we do not want to build packages as a root. Um, building packages consists of running uh, build scripts that are often shell scripts and who knows what, and they might damage your system and also install files into areas you don't want to be um, altered, for instance, uh, user bin or user s bin. So, um, to do that, you just build as a regular user, and if a build system tries to install into um, user bin, it just gets permission denied. Uh, 
Aha, let's go back. Okay. Now we can set up the password. Okay. We will migrate some of the settings from the root user to our regular user. All right. We will allow our regular user to um, use sudo. Oh, we haven't installed it yet. Sure, let's do that. So what I did here is I created the sudoers file before the package had the chance to do this. Uh, and uh, what uh, the package installer did is installed the uh, default uh, file sudoers.cashew, uh, but did not override the uh, existing one. That's the default policy for, um, for configuration files. Um, the package installer should not override any files that you've written yourself or, or modified. So what I'm going to do now is uh, just copy um, the the, f the um, default file into, into place. And then I'm going to add to modify it by adding my regular user to it. Okay, now it should be fine. So let's see if we can SSH as the regular user. Yes, we can. Let's see if, um, okay, that's good. But I think it will be just easier for, for me to not have to answer, uh, um, enter the password every time I, I want to run something. All right, so uh, the first setup is ready. Uh, we can go on and start installing packages uh, for the GAR system. So let's go to garopencashew.org. Okay, uh, and here we have the GAR setup page. Um, so here's a list of packages uh, we will install. They will pull in a lot of dependencies. So um, don't don't expect the, the GAR system to be a lightweight system. Uh, I assume that if you have a host in on which you will be doing uh, package builds, uh, you don't mind installing you, the, all the all the dependencies that are re required. So the main package here is the is GARDEV and there's also MGAR. So uh, GARDEV is all the dependencies that are needed to build packages and MGAR is a kind of a shell wrapper. Um, GCC is the compiler. Um, this um, instruction uh, tells you to also install uh, Oracle Solar Studio compiler. It has been used by default uh, in the project, but I am not be, uh, I'm not going to be installing it because it's it's just a just a pain in the neck. You have to go to the Oracle website, register, download some zip file, unzip. It's just it's just too much hassle. So I'm simply going to to install these packages. This is going to take a while. Okay. 
our packages are um, now installed and we can go forward um, we are skipping the Solaris Studio installation and uh, the next step will be to set up GAR RC this is a configuration file uh, used by GAR where you can um, do settings that affect all of your builds so um, I'll just get that template into here I will edit that, oh I have no syntax highlighting, I like syntax highlighting so enable that um, is um, MGAR in it. MGAR, I'll quickly show what MGAR is. The main language in which GAR is written in is GNU Make and MGAR is just a shell wrapper around a, a couple of commands. Maybe I will do that. Okay, this is better. some settings <coughs> so this is so this is a shell script which just uh, wraps uh, a couple of commands that you typically run um, here's stuff you can do um, one of the things I like to use is find file and edit file so these two commands so basically you give it the name of um, the file you want to edit in your source and it just goes and, and fires up an editor just finds the the file with the with the name just makes it much more easy to to find um, so mgar in it um, basically what it does is is it creates a directory and does a checkout of gar sources and um, once this is done, you can run the, the next command, which will um, do the checkout of all the build descriptions. And that can be a lengthy process. And it can take up about um, 30 minutes from my experience. So, yeah, I usually just fired it off and I go and fix myself a cup of coffee. Uh, the checkout that is going on right now, it's it's the uh, GAR sources. There's a couple of branches and all of them are being checked out. So um, the idea is that you might want potentially to switch between different uh, GAR branches. As you can see, there's V2 Solaris 11. That's a branch in which the Solaris 11 support is going on. So I mentioned uh, earlier that this is only a Solaris 10 packaging tutorial. Uh, when Solaris 11 packaging is, is ready and working, we will probably do uh, another video with that. Okay, so we got our GAR checkout and um, the next thing we can do is to run the, the command that is suggested here. Uh, what it does is it does the full checkout, checkout of all the package descriptions. This is actually from the same, um, so, uh, the, the same subversion repository in SourceForge, just um, different path.
All right, we have the full tree of package descriptions checked out and uh, we can go ahead and start making our package. I think, oh, we're missing one thing, um, git configuration. Why is git needed? The reason why we need it is that um, when we patch software, so software often does not compile on Solaris. If you if you take a random project you want to compile, whether it's in C or C++, it will mo most uh, more often than not just not build. There will be something something problematic of, of one sort or the other. So y we often have to patch the sources. So what Guard does is when it unpacks the sources of, of a software that we want to build, it immediately creates a Git a repository um, with just these sources. So when uh, it doesn't compile, you go and you modify some files, um, you can keep track of what you've uh, modified and, and whatnot. So when um, you're done with your modifications, you can uh, you can run mgar make patch, which will just go and will ask Git for modifications and will create a patch for you. So it's it's a very useful setup. Um, I'm just gonna write my email and my name. Okay, so that's everything, and uh, we can continue with uh, starting to build. Well, we need to choose what we are going to build, and um, I found this this um, software called Dash. Um, let's see where we have it. Dash shell. It's a very small POSIX shell. Oh, there it is. Okay, and files. Okay, so we, this is where we have the sources. So we're gonna copy the link to the tar file. Uh, we're going to go into the uh, open cache directory. In here, we have all the all the subdirectories with all the software that we have uh, built recipes for. It's a little bit like, uh, say, uh, BSD ports. It's a, it's a similar kind of layout. Um, and we can run mgar new package. Let's call it dash demo. Okay, so we have some boilerplate files in there. We can go in and uh, make our uh, make changes to our f to our build description. So let the name of the package be just dash. Uh, let's see. Um, what was the file name that we got? It was that. So the version here was 057. And the directory from which we fetch the file is this. Um, so this this uh, will be basically expanded to dash uh, dash zero five seven, so we can leave that, and we can just bump up the version later on when we need to. And this is not necessary. This is not necessary. Uh, one thing we need to do is um, set the compiler to GNU. Otherwise, Gar will assume that we want to build with the Solar Studio compiler. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, run the build. All right, one. So there's a. Sometimes when there's something wrong or something um, missing, uh, you will get an error message. In this case, uh, the categories have been deprecated, so we, we no longer use categories um, in the uh, in the build description. Okay, now it's being downloaded. 
I think we were still missing the MD5 sum, yes. So we're going to make the, the checksum for our um, for our build. So um, when we see SVN status, we see that there's a, there's the make file, there's the checksums file. So if if we look inside the checksum files, it's it's basically the just the checksum of um, of the sources file. So that uh, if you um, check it out in some other location, you can make sure that you're actually compiling the same sources that you were before. So let's run the build and let's see what happens. This is um, this package is using Auto Tools, so it's the, your typical um, configure, make, make, install triad, which is very convenient. Um, I keep hearing a lot of criticism about auto tools but from a perspective of a guy who writes who uh, builds software on Solaris auto tools are awesome and if you try to build anything build uh, with uh, I don't know CMake or or WAF or um, I don't know um, anything else scones it will never build uh -huh. we have um, a problem Exclamation mark not found. Aha, uh -huh. I think I know what that is. I'll show you. So basically, um, when you write something like this, let's say, right, and then you run it with bash. It works. Why would it? No, why wouldn't it? But um, this should also work, right? And yes, it does. Why wouldn't it? Except when you erase these two characters, and now you're running bin sh. You're getting the same error that we just saw above, right here. So the problem is that. The bin sh on Solaris does not understand the exclamation mark syntax in the shell. It's not POSIX compliant. Um, so what uh, Solaris has is something in user xpg for bin sh. And if you use that, this works. So what we can do is uh, I just I hope that the way the script uh, whatever calls that is written. Oh yeah, it's even so it just invokes a uh, executable called sh and just user bin is you know the first sh that you get is in um, in uh, slash bin. So what we can do instead we can put this um, this path in front of everything else. And when we do that, um, this specific sh will be called instead of the, the slash bin slash sh. So let's go back to our directory and let's go and modify the path. Uh, and it's going to be user xpg4 bin and then our alt path. And let's see what happens now. Okay, looks good. All right. Let's make a package. All right, our package is ready. It uh, was placed in here. Let's uh, examine uh, the package that we build. 
Um, let's copy the package in here. Unzip it and then transform it to the directory form. So now we have a directory called csw dash. Okay. Let's see. Oh, we don't have the tree utility. Let's install it. Okay. So this is the layout if you look at the directory. Um, version of the of the package so you have the install directory with the depend file th that uh, describes what our package depends on uh, some package metadata the list of files and files laid out uh, the same way they will be laid out in the file system when the package is installed so it's basically just the CSW bin dash uh, we have a man page and we have the license file and that's all so um, we can look at the package info file that's the metadata so it's just the key um, key value kind of pair structured file and um, it uh, contains some of the information that we entered into uh, gar rc earlier uh, it uh, also says from which place in the um, package uh, build tree package description tree um, it was built from and it also has the uncommitted tag because we have some we have some local modifications we have not committed upstream to the um, to the um, source code repository Norm normally in uh, open cashew we never release packages that have been built from uncommitted sources well the idea is kind of obvious you know it, whatever we build has to be um, possible to rebuild by um, by anyone so we it can it has to be public we cannot build from from private sources okay let's look at the package map file so this is just the list of files that go um, in, the, uh, in the package so we can um, yes except we need to go back we can remove that guy and package add normally package add the whole the whole package okay so dash is now installed i think we even have the man page for dash oh it's not formatted well yeah this happens often with uh, with sources maybe we need to use um, GNU trough for that to work properly um, but um, as far as the shell itself I think it should work yeah looks good and if we go to our um, our test uh, let's try out like this Yep, it works. So if you have completed this tutorial, you can follow up by building your own package catalog um, or by submitting your new builds or updated builds to back to Open Cashew. Uh, feel free to drop by our IRC channel, which is hash open CSW on Freenode. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter and Google+. That's all, and thanks for watching.